like to mix it up a bit. And last week I was contemplating wearing my hair straight more often, but before I made a move, I had to figure out which is the least damaging. Is it straightening with a straightening iron or is it chemical straightening? It turns out, to find out the answer, you're going to need to know a little science. The answer involves bonds, not James Bond or Bell Bonds or even investment bonds for that matter. I'm talking hair bonds. They link the proteins in your hair together to give them strength and they help take your hair from this to this. There are a number of bonds in the hair, but we're going to focus on two, hydrogen bonds and sulfur bonds. When you straighten your hair with a straightening iron, you are manipulating hydrogen bonds. When you straighten your hair chemically, you're manipulating sulfur bonds. So how do we manipulate these bonds? Well, you take what your mama gave you and then you break it. That's right, you break the bond, realign the protein straight, and then reform the bond. Now, breaking bonds is not a damage-free process. Every time you break the proteins, they get a little harder to reassemble. In addition, the more elbow grease or force you use, the more bonds fail to reform over time. Remember, bonds lend strength to the hair. So, the more that are broken, the weaker the hair is. Straightening irons use heat to drive out water, the mortal enemy of straighter styles. The heated ceramic plates reform hydrogen bonds already broken by water that's drawn into the hair from the surrounding environment. Fun fact, hair is hygroscopic, meaning it attracts water from the air. Hairstyles are harder to maintain in human environments because water breaks hydrogen bonds, causing hairstyles to lose shape and returns hair to its natural state. So, if you've ever had anyone tell you that the steam that comes off your hair when you're straightening is moisture being locked into the hair strand, you actually now know it's the opposite. It's water being driven out. Straightening iron temperatures range from about 150 to 450 Fahrenheit. If you apply too little heat, you'll get nothing in terms of results. If you apply too much, the water in the hair shaft will boil so quickly, it'll actually erupt. What you really need to do is experiment. Start by setting your straightening iron to the lowest setting and then work your way up until you find the lowest setting that achieves results. With chemical straightening, sulfur bonds are stronger than hydrogen bonds and require chemical solutions in order to break, as opposed to weaker forces like water or heat. Fun fact, that awful smell of burnt hair, that's the smell of sulfur bonds being broken by extreme heat. Once broken, bonds are reformed, allowing proteins to reassemble into a new straight shape. Like the options at the salsa bar, chemical treatments come in mild, medium, and strong. Mmm, good salsa. If you're looking for a mild solution, you'll probably find something like ammonium sulfites. These tend to be the least damaging, but also only last for about a dozen washes. If you're looking for a medium strength solution, you're probably going to find something like ammonium thioglycolates. These can be found in popular treatments like the Japanese hair straightening. And if you're looking for something that boasts maximum straightening power, you're looking for hydroxide relaxers. These will take care of the densest kink and curl, but they're about as strong as Drano, so your hairstylist should only recommend it if you have the hair type to support it. So, Zen Master secret, it's this. When making a decision, remember, both methods are damaging, so the least damaging is the one that you can do the least frequently with the least amount of chemicals or heat. Don't overdo it. Take it from the wise man that said, don't kill a mosquito with a cannon. I don't know who this proverbial genius was, but I bet you we had some really great hair. Damage control. Minimize damage whenever possible. If straightening with an iron, reduce to every two to three days. And if you're seeking chemical treatment, wait six to eight weeks between sessions. Lastly, condition, condition, condition. I can't stress it enough. Think deep conditioning, thermal conditioning, or conditioners that go along with your shampoo. I am Ms. Beautifile and I want you to get the science behind your beauty products so you can make more informed choices and get better results. For more on this and other topics, come visit me at MsBeautifile.com. <laughs>